back to your travel journey nest egg. Remember the last time we talked, I said, once you've got your plan and your budget in place, you don't want to put that information up on the shelf. Don't put it up on the shelf like a book that you've read. You definitely want to make sure that you are working your plan and revising it and adjusting it as necessary. So what I want to talk to you today about is how do you work your plan and your budget to benefit you and to keep you on track with your travel journey? Well, the first thing that you want to do is review where you are in your plan and in your budget. You want to view how much have you saved. You want to determine how much have you paid off and what's left to estimate. Because remember, your plan, part of your plan was estimated and real cost. So hopefully you've had done some legwork on making sure that you're out there on the online travel agencies or you've gone to your favorite hotels or wherever you wanna stay and you're updating those costs as those costs update. We all know that airfare continues to go up and down, up and down. So hopefully you have a flight tracker out there for your flights so that you're getting the best deal possible. The other thing you wanna do is review your budget and make those adjustments as necessary. And I'll show you that in a minute when we get to the spreadsheet. Um, one of the things you want to think about is perhaps you need to add additional money to your travel journey nest egg. Maybe you're not saving enough. Maybe you've only budgeted $100 to $200 per paycheck. And maybe you'll have to update that uh, to $150 to $250 a paycheck, depending on what your budget is for the year. The other thing you want to do is consider paying off anything that you can pay ahead of time. You know, if you have made hotel arrangements, reservations, maybe you've already paid for your airfare through a credit card. That's okay, because one of the things that we want to do is to make sure that we're getting those cash back or travel reward benefits. So it's not an issue paying for your cost ahead of time on a credit card, but you definitely want to make a plan to pay those credit cards off prior to your travel. The other thing you wanna do is determine and add any additional items that you forgot to budget for. And I'll show you that in a minute as well. I forgot to budget for shopping. I like to go shopping, you know, when I go on vacation. And I like to purchase souvenirs for family and friends uh, that I want to bring back to them. I honestly forgot to put that into my budget. So I've now added that to my spreadsheet. The other thing that you want to do with your plan is if there have been any new trips that have come up for you, uh, perhaps a friend is getting married or, you know, they're having a birthday and you want to travel on that vacation with them. So you want to add that new vacation or new trip to your plan. Perhaps there have been trips that have been canceled, like I mentioned before. Uh, our family reunion trip got canceled last year. So you definitely want to update your plan for any of those canceled trips as well. And by all means, make sure to pay any items that are due. So if you're paying on a cruise or there's other trips where there are specific deadlines for you to pay off, you want to make sure that you're meeting that deadline because you don't want your trip canceled because you did not pay for it by the due date. All right. So the next thing when we meet after after we review the spreadsheet, I want to make sure that um, you have strategies to consider 
as you embark upon your travel journey, right? So remember to do that. We'll talk about strategies that you need to consider as you can, you know, continue on your travel journey. All right, so let me share the spreadsheet with you um, so that we can take a look at that as well. And let me share that with you right now. So hopefully you're seeing my spreadsheet. This is our vacation budget planning template. Uh, remember we talked about the items that you need to budget for. And as I mentioned earlier, I now have in a budget for my shopping. I can't believe that I forgot and left that out. Uh, the other thing that I've done here, as you can see within the spreadsheet, I've got my um, vacations that I've got planned for the year. I've got my estimated and real costs. And one of the things that I encourage you guys to do is to make comments within your spreadsheet. So like here, I have uh, commented here that I've paid or that I've budgeted for $1,000 for the hotel. I've budgeted $670 for the airfare. Uh, for the Las Vegas trip, uh, I budgeted $762 for the hotel and $450 for the airfare. And over here for the May cruise, you know, it's cost us $3,200 and some for the three of us. I've got that comment in here. Because again, as I've mentioned, you don't want to put your plan on the shelf. You want to work that plan as you can. And so not only is this a tool to help you plan for the current year, it also helps you plan for the next year. By adding comments to your spreadsheet, now you've got historical data that you can look back on. So that come this October, as you're planning for 2025, you can go back to your uh, planning spreadsheet and you can see Oh, this is how much this vacation cost me. This is how, what we did for 2024, and this was the total cost. Okay, so that's why I like putting in comments, because what happens is as I work my plan and as I pay these things off, so already I've got the hotel paid for, I've already paid for the airfare, um, I've already paid part of the money that I need for the hotel, and I've got about $300 left. I still have the $450 to pay because I put that on a charge card, right? The, the cruise, I've already paid that off, so I don't owe any more money on that. Now I can go and look at my total cost remaining for the year and I've got about $12,000 left. The other thing that I've added to my planning spreadsheet here is my travel journey nest egg. I actually have a separate fund and remember the last time we talked I encouraged you to create a separate fund for your travel. You want to have a savings account uh, for any expenses that you want might uh, incur for the year. You know, you might be wanting to do home improvements. Um, you might have taxes and insurance that you have to pay for your house. You have money that you've put into savings for your emergency fund. You don't want to have your travel in that lump of money. You want to have a separate fund or in a separate account for your vacation planning. So I call mine my family vacation fund, but that's my travel journey nest egg. And so currently I've got $5,000 in my travel journey nest egg, but I've got $12,000 as you can see that I plan to spend for the entire year, which is leaving me with a deficit of 7,000 and some odd dollars. That's okay, I can deal with that. So what happens now is I have to make a decision. Do I need to increase the amount of money that I'm putting in savings so that I, I know that I'll be able to pay for that 
or do I need to pay off some more things early on, you know, so that I have enough money in both my savings account and my credit cards to pay for my future travel. So what I might want to do is I might want to make a plan of increasing the amount of money that I'm putting in savings, as well as make a plan for paying off the credit cards. I might say, okay, I'm going to increase my budget to uh, include 50 more dollars to my savings. And then I'll also make a plan to say every pay, maybe I'll pay 20 to $50 to pay off that credit card. Because remember the goal is to have everything for your vacation paid off before you travel. And if you can't pay it off before you travel, you want to make sure that you've got enough money in your travel journey nest egg to pay for it when you get back from your vacation so that you're not building up a lot of money on your credit cards. All right, the other thing that you wanna do is if there have been new vacations that have come to you that you want, you know, new trips that you wanna take, you definitely want to add them to your spreadsheet. Or if there's trips that you um, are going to cancel because now maybe that there's another opportunity for you to travel someplace that you want to go instead of going on the vacation or trip that you wanted to take. So for us, I'm going to cancel the Father's Day weekend. So I actually put that there and say, yep, that's canceled for me. I will go ahead and highlight that spreadsheet or that area and say that this one's canceled. And the other thing that I'll do is I'll zero out all of the dollars that I had estimated that I was going to pay because now I'm going to use that money on something else. So as you can see, I'm zeroing that out, all right? Because I'm no longer going to take that trip. And so now I can see my net or my future cost has gone down to 10,000 and some odd dollars. So instead of having that 7,000 and some odd dollar deficit, now I only have a 5,000 and some odd dollar deficit. I can still make that up again by paying off, you know, any um, costs that I can pay off ahead of time. And then I can also increase my budget for my travel journey nest egg by putting more uh, back in savings. But again, those are choices that you can make. Those are decisions that you can make. You know, do I want to pay it off now or do I just want to put, continue to, you know, put more money back towards my savings and my travel journey nest egg? But the decision is up to you. And that's the nice thing about putting things on a vacation planning budget template because only you own your destiny. No one else does. So this is personal between you and your travel. I can't tell you what to do. Other people can't tell you what to do. All I can do is make suggestions to help you get to a point of where you are, you know, making it uh, a habit to plan and budget for your vacations. So that's what I wanted to show you on the spreadsheet. And again, the next time that we come together, I'm going to offer up some suggestions for helping you to get to travel. Because my goal for you is to make sure that you are traveling more and also planning and budgeting for any trips that you want to take. So next time I'll see you and we'll talk. And again, I say thank you for joining your travel journey nest day. Have a good day. Bye-bye.